Hey there, friend. Ever wish your enemies would be struck down by thunders from the heavens? Ever hope for those enemies to spontaneously combust in a glorious blue poof? Do you want to feel the rush of being your own greatest danger? Well, coming to a theater near you, a build sponsored by Michael Bay and my addiction to Shimmerons. This build is a spiritual successor to the Shimmeron Bomber and Gall Mentalist Bomber builds I have made in the past, and it actually succeeds where those could not, in that Herald of Thunder actually deals single target, and I don't have to six link up some random spell in order to do single target. All thanks to one of my new favorite uniques, Storm Secret. Storm Secret allows one to easily keep up Herald of Thunder during a boss fight. By reprocking Herald of Thunder when you shock an enemy, as well as increased Herald of Thunderbolt's frequency by up to 50%. This was previously something you could not do, as in Herald of Thunder could only be procced if you kill a shocked enemy, which would require you to do some shenanigans with the Worm Flask, and it really just never worked. Herald of Thunder was also buffed in 3.11, allowing it to hit at a much higher rate. Between these buffs and the Lone Messenger Key Notable, Herald of Thunder has all the equipment it needs to unleash some serious single target damage. Now Herald of Thunder covers our single target, but it would not be a proper auto bomber without explosions. For this build we acquire explosions through the combination of Storm Secret and Impulses. Impulses explodes enemies who are shocked, but cannot shock enemies itself so it cannot chain off itself. But Storm's Gift fixes this by making it so that enemies we kill are shocked and it spreads those shocks, thus allowing Impulse's explosions to chain on themselves. An alternative to this would be using a Crusader chest and some sort of 50% conversion gloves to lightning. That way we could still scale a lot of lightning damage and crit and the explosions would probably still work quite well. Now these explosions won't chain unless they do significant damage. So we need to scale these explosions and one of the best ways to do so is to crit which synergizes well with our Herald of Thunder damage because Herald of Thunder can also scale off crit quite well. To do this, we use two Shimmeron unique wands. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking double Shimmerons and double Storm Secret. Four self-damaging uniques in one build. Does this man have a death wish? The answer to that is kind of. We solve this imminent danger by traveling halfway across the known world to Call to Arms. Also grabbing up a generous application of Immortal Call, some Life Leech, as well as using Divine Flesh, which holds a commanding position in my heart as the best keystone in the game. Then we bind Enduring Cry to left click as well as another key, so that way we can never stop permanently casting Enduring Cry, because if we ever do, our lightning damage uniques will execute us for lack of focus in a dangerous situation. Now this at face value actually sounds qu quite awful, but in reality when I was playing it, it took me a couple maps to get used to. and I started to not really notice it. The only times it really came into play is when I'd want to talk to a betrayal encounter and I'd get distracted reading and I'd completely forget about it and there'd be monsters around and I would die anyways if I was playing another build for the most part. But you live and you learn. Now let's cover the rest of our gear. For our boots, we simply grab high resistance movement speed life boots. Ideally, if you want to min-max this, I'd go for some tailwind, possibly damage penetration enchantment or the higher tier movement speed. And for the belt slot, I would recommend a Stygian, an Elder, or a Hunter Stygian Vise if you can afford it. That way you can get an Onslaught on Kill on your Abyssal Jewel. But if you can't afford it, just grab a Leather Belt, throw some Pristine Fossils at it, get some High Life, throw some Resistance on it, and you're really going to be fine with just that. For a helmet, let me walk you through a step-by-step -step process how to create a 7-link helmet for Herald of Thunder with Essences of Horror and Harvest Crafts. Now, although this is a perfectly fine helmet and we could turn this into our 7-link, I don't like ruining the example with having hypothermia already on here, so I'm going to roll over it. And I just noticed something. Intelligence is on the suffix, and it's threatening to ruin us. We're going to do a beastcraft where we remove a suffix and add a prefix. This is a ferric wolf alpha, the it's moment complete. of truth. Is the helmet dead, or are we advancing? Today is a good day. We're going to make an 8-link helmet. Let's do it, guys. First, we craft cold resistance to block cold resistance on the mod pool. That way, when we augment, the only mod that can occur is hypothermia. Here, we have an augment cold modifier. As I said before, the only other cold modifier possible is hypothermia. It's not a game of chance. It is hypothermia. And there we have it. Hypothermia is on the helmet. Now that we've removed the crafted modifier, if we augment a caster modifier, the only mod it can aug on is spell crit. There's three tiers. There's plus one to spell crit, plus two, and plus three. Ideally, we hit three. If we don't, we can recraft it. We don't have to remove, add, any more. 
for our amulet slot, we simply are awakening orbing a plus one intelligence skill gem amulet with a plus one lightning skill gem amulet, and then refining the craft with harvest crafts. Now let's go over the gem links. To start off with Herald of Thunder, we have in our helmet, linked to elemental focus, awaken lightning pen, and inspiration. Since we have inspiration on Herald of Thunder, we have to be generating inspiration charges, which leads us to our movement skill. We use flame dash with inspiration, allowing us to generate inspiration charges for Herald of Thunder. Next up, we have Enduring Cry and Immortal Call linked to Second Wind and Increased Duration. This is basically just increased the uptime of these two skills, allowing us for more sustain and more defense. In order to proc our Herald of Thunder, we use Ball Lightning. Um, you don't need this in the six link. I was able to get Ball Lightning to proc Shock on Shaper with a two link. The reality is I got lucky and I got a six link Impulsa in eight fusings and I just started supporting it with a bunch of random stuff. But you don't need this. A four link will do you just fine. Do not worry about getting a six link Impulsa. It's not really necessary. In our gloves, we have Castman Damage Taken Level 1, linked to a low level wave of conviction to apply lightning exposure, as well as Curse on Hit and Conductivity to basically lower the enemy's resistance as much as possible. And lastly, we have a Castman Damage Taken Cold Snap to give us some frenzy charges while we're mapping just for some extra damage and quality of life. For our flasks, we have a Bleed Removal Life Flask, a Diamond Flask with Freeze Immunity, and a, and a Quicksilver with movement speed of Adrenaline. Um, the other two slots, I have a Quartz Flask for phasing and a Mana Flask. The reality is you don't exactly need these. You can pick up two more damage flasks here, but I didn't have the money or the currency or the time or the cares to replace these, and these are just what I played with. For our minor pantheons, we use Soul of Arakali. The reason we do this is if we are ever really taking a lot of damage, we can weapon swap and on our weapon swap we will stop taking lightning damage over time from our shimmerons thus proccing 50 percent increased life recovery rate this is huge for our leech it's big for our enduring cry region you can do this if you're really in a dangerous situation and you really want to get some life back real quick just weapon swap real quick proc this you'll get some extra sustain and for our minor pantheon we use soul of growth cool this allows us to get five additional physical damage reduction because it counts the storm secret lightning damage against us as a hit on us which means we get one percent fizz reduction every single time we get take lightning damage from the storm secret which is basically up to five percent all the time and then we can also cause enemies to have a reduced attack speed if we took the time to use the divine vessel and go get it. For the bandits, I would either recommend killing all or saving a Lyra. So here's a look at our passive tree. It looks a little bit awkward at first just because we're traveling all the way to get called arms to have easy sustain our, on our enduring cry by having it on our left click. But it actually doesn't end up being too bad because we have nodes we'd want on the way anyways. We pick up power charges, we'd have to go all the way here anyways. And then to go further over to call to arms, we pass through or next to a lot of life nodes, as well as Divine Judgment, so it ends up not being too bad, as well as picking up a Cluster Jewel here. I forgot to add a second Medium Cluster Jewel. I would end up probably recommend doing so, and dropping something like this Endurance Charge here, get a couple extra nodes here, maybe drop one of the small life nodes, or the one of the small damage nodes over here, and finish out a cluster setup here as well. Now looking specifically at our ascendancy, we grab Unstable Infusion for a plus one power charge and Deadly Infusion to give us flat crit chance as well as crit multi for a power charge and some movement speed. These two nodes are insanely strong and they're very good and pretty much whenever you're assassin, you grow, you grow these two nodes. You don't really have much choice in the matter for the most part. Next up, we went for Opportunistic for the movement speed of running around the map and getting some more damage on our unique many enemies when there's only one nearby. As well as, I made the hard choice of giving up Mistwalker because we have Elusive on, on the tree now. It's not quite as powerful as it used to be. And on top of that, we get Ambush and Assassinate, which feels insanely good with our low life killing abilities we get the boss to that last third of the hp and our herald of thunder just shreds them to pieces also the more multi the more critical strike chance on full life is very good for chaining explosions so these nodes end up feeling very strong i just want to thank you guys all for watching have an excellent day uh, the part where i break the gloves within the first try and go frenzy charge okay do we keep going do we, do we believe ourselves to have some RNG going here? Close eyes, spam four more times. <laughs> okay, I'm closing my eyes. I don't want to do this. Okay, I was able to apply it four more times. What, what happened? Oh, they're gone! <laughs> no! <laughs> what, what, what? It had vulnerability and plus one charge. What did I roll over? <laughs> Why did I roll over? <laughs> no! <laughs>
It had vulnerability of plus one charge. They were so good. <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs>